Today's Trinity Podcast. I am here with some of my friends, and we are going to go over important topics, new projects that we're working on, and goings on at Phoenix Trinity. So to my right, I have Kevin, who's, who's joined us. Kevin, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your new role here at PT. I am uh, here to help uh, bring PTs to the world. Is, is the idea, I guess. Um, I'm Kevin. For I was uh, got involved in the industry probably two or three years ago heavily, and then um, always been a competitor uh, on the three gun side of things. So the honcho was how I found Phoenix Trinity, and then somehow I stumbled into now we're we're selling Phoenix Trinity. So it was a good thing for me. Excited to be part of your guys' team and excited to be on this podcast. Awesome. Um, next to him. Um probably doesn't need an introduction, but is, is my other half. So tell us, tell us a little about you and, and what you're contributing here. I don't really contribute a whole lot. I just make this stuff. I'm a good jander, I clean the floors good, but we do bounce ideas off each other, trying to come up with something new that nobody's done yet. Awesome, and on the other side of him, um, Father Time himself, Mr. Hutch. Um, Hutch, give us a, a, little, a little bit about yourself. Uh, retired fireman uh, out of the Atlanta area for 35 years. Uh, been a competitive shooter for quite a long time and had kind of run the gambit with all the different manufacturers and heard about the honcho and checked it out, got with Tiffany, talked with Tiffany a good bit and ordered it, started shooting the gun, believed in the gun uh, as far as one of the best systems that's out there. It offered the most versatility in the market and the best value in the market. And as things kind of progressed along, then Tiffany, once I retired, then Tiffany offered me a job. And, and now we're sitting here trying to get the, <clears throat> the news out here with the Morph, which is one of our new lines that comes off the competition line. And then we got some exciting new stuff that we'd like to talk about here as well. Awesome. You guys are like traveling preachers. Yeah. It's in the gospel. That's yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. That's what it really is. I'm <laughs> traveling evangelist. It's the PT gospel. You got to go out and spread it. Spread the word. Yes. 100%. I always, that is a great way to put it. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't think I'll be to church anyway. I'm sure Dylan will have you a Bible ready for you oh, get home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably be Tito's that goes with it. Right. So, to kick things off. Um, what we're going to do, part of the podcast, we're going to kind of open the doors to things. We want to show everyone the thought processes, trial and error, um, trying things out, things that work that don't work. We are going to include some cost things in there so people can kind of see the time that's involved in stuff and the cost that goes into it um, and, and really kind of open the doors and show everyone what our process is for R&D and testing and, and ideas and throwing stuff around. So. Um, we've got two projects um, that we're wanting to work on. Um, one we've started a little bit of um, that we'll probably dive into into another podcast, but we're actually working on a super lightweight um, version of the Morph that will actually have an aluminum frame versus a steel frame. Um, and this is kind of thrown together um, my concho here, his uh, initial thoughts of a starting point for it. We'll probably do a different texture on the grip, um, do some really crazy stuff with the slide. I've heard some ideas going around, um, but that will be on a, another show. We'll actually dive into this one and maybe get some feedback um, from other people out in the world and, and maybe have a hand in the design of this model, um, I think would be kind of cool. But I think what we're going to dive into now is we've been talking about doing a five inch gun. So we have the full size honchos, we have the compact morphs, we were going to do something in the five inch range, maybe geared a little bit more um, towards the tactical crowd, um, do something maybe nine millimeter specific um, with some different barrel options. Um, what kind of, you know, stuff should we put into a gun like that? Should we look at the grip? Should we change something in the grip size, um, materials that we use, slide cuts, functionality, um, that kind of stuff. So. Um, what do what do you guys think? Anyone have any strong opinions on a tactical model and what direction we should go in? I mean, the most important part of a tactical gun is it's, it's got to run under any conditions. So, whatever we're figuring out there, buddy, uh, it's got to be able to get dirty and gross and grimy and get banged off of barricades and getting in and out of police cars and all those kind of things. And then obviously, when it needs to be deployed, it be uh, 
on time and on target. But I think that's one of the most the biggest things is it will need to be very uh, very rigid, um, which based on the other guns that we've built, I don't think it'll. Well, that's be a one of the there. that's one of the beautiful things about the morph and the uh, lock block and the breech block in the system here with the PT line. We're not sitting there, and we're not dependent on a link in the barrel that's sitting there getting gritty that that changes over time. This pretty much stays as long as, as the end user is sitting here taking care of this gun and keeping it properly oiled, the morphs are running for, they'll run forever, just like the honcho. Uh, the only issues we have is when people don't take care of them, but as far as dependability, it'd be hard to beat that. So if we're, if we're talking about some, you know, the, the grit and getting into things, I think our current tolerances, and, and you would know this better than I do, with the way we, as tight as we build things now, are we going to have to look at maybe loosening this model up some to allow for some of that? Yeah, because sand is the great equalizer. Sand is horrible. Dirt, not so much, because dirt breaks down. Sand, it really yeah. doesn't. Once it gets in there, it's... It's in there. You ain't flushing so it out. So does it turn into like almost like lapping compound? Pretty much. I would imagine you know, oil and sand mixed together. Yeah, is... it's, it's, and that's kind of another consideration we need to look at too whenever we're doing slide cuts. I mean, holes and slide cuts, when you put holes in the slide, it lets stuff get in there. It gets in and around the barrel, affects the lockup of it. I mean, that's just it's one of the things we'll have to look at. I mean, maybe we'll do some sand tests. We'll just go out there and drop it in the sand, pick it up, shoot it. Well, we're in Florida, so there's a lot of sand yeah, out there. Plenty of that. It's a true plethora. So we'll ha definitely have to look into tolerance as far as the barrel, um, the lock block, slide to frame fit. No, so to be in the slide to frame fit because that's frame. where the biggest grid will get where it'll stop the gun. So if it like you know is on the side and gets some in it, it's gonna yeah. kind of draw it in there with the oil in there. That makes sense. Um, what do we want to do as far as, as a grip? Um, we want to do a new grip texture. Do we want to look at grip tape? Do we want to do a skinnier grip? Do we want to do an Evo styled grip that's you know kind of swelled out on the sides to fill in your hand? Um, I know most tactical things are usually you know kind of weight driven. So I'm I'm assuming aluminum because titanium would just make it ridiculously right. expensive. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming somebody aluminum. will want a titanium. It'd be tactical though. We'll though. <laughs> Someone mm -hmm. will want it in titanium. And well, that's cool. We'll and we can do yeah, that, yeah. yes. Someone yeah. with a, one of those credit cards that has no limits, they can hit us up and we'll make it out of anything hey, they want. Nobody else makes one but us. Really? Yeah, nobody really? else makes a titanium grip. We're nobody. the only company making titanium grips. It's too hard to cut. Yeah. The I mean, YouTube I, machinists have trouble figuring that one out. I mean, I yeah. think the grip is going to be essential, obviously, if, especially being a tactical gun. They can't, uh, they can't fall out of their hands. Yeah. yeah. Is that something that you would look for for like gloves, I mean, is that a is that a glove? I mean, kind of most thing? of them don't wear gloves initially. Some SWAT guys will glove up if they're going to do an entry dish to kill with you know debris and things that happen. But your regular patrol guy, no, it's not going to be working now. Okay, yeah. no. it, it's just got to be where if it gets wet, you know, and then in the worst, worst case scenario, if it were to get bloody. I almost feel like the the PT. We hand me the grip down there. That one, yeah. I mean, I feel like you know maybe not the the extra aggressive one. <laughs> But the kind of the middle of the road with this would be a good texture for a tactical gun, um, or a really good grip tape. Yeah, I, I. Well, the only thing I worry about with that texture is snagging on on different stuff because that aggressive <laughs> will reach out and, and grab you, and and if they're really not used to something aggressive, it's it can be a little rough yeah. on your hands. Yeah. I know the competition guys love it, um, and and so much so that a lot of people are copying it, but. Um, Maybe, maybe grip tape. I'm thinking with grip tape, they could change it up to what their needs are. You can do a yeah. more coarse, you know, different offerings in it. How hard would it be? Um, I know there isn't really readily available and based on how we do the width of the grip, just, you know, available grip tape, but I'm sure it can't be that hard to, to get the grip laser, tape and have it around. like laser, laser cutted. Mm -hmm. to make a template and have a laser. Well, I just think we need, just, why don't we have them tell us, tell us, uh, when you see our podcast, what's, uh, what's the consensus grip tape, uh, What's or texture, 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 yeah. or, texture, texture or, what are, what are or what would you like to see? You know, yeah. lines, dots. Uh, you know, what? What do okay. you? What's your interest on? Yeah. Um. So outside of that, on the the grips, are we going to go full size grip, or are we going to go reduced, mm. like shorter grip, kind of like, like the, the, the morphs and the carry guns have here? 
I feel like the first tactical pistol should be full size, but that's just me. Yeah, I. Yeah, because you're really not wanting to conceal it. You want no, to it's a duty gun. Maximum amount of hand on it. Well, I was saying with a five inch gun where it's getting a little longer, probably yeah. a little it's bit mm-hmm. bigger. Yeah, it's a duty gun that can more that, balance that will have gun. multiple uses. Is kind of the whole idea behind this. Yeah, I think the stainless is going to be way too heavy. So I think we do a, maybe an aluminum. Yeah. I, even the width of this one, maybe we do like a combination of the size of this, but kind of the width of the carry one. Yeah, the the oh. length, get the length in it. So the, the curved in the, the back. Yeah. So the curved in the back, but a little bit skinnier on the sides, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Um, we need to do a Magwell-ish kind yes. of deal. I Maybe think I think literally. definitely should be able to a, put Magwell a small along small, small, the hip stick. A, a, a small Magwell. Okay. Yeah. Not, uh, the, like, not the not the vacuum. A, a that tactical the Magwell. Not a, not a competition with the big funneled area, <laughs> just a tactical small mic. Something that's kind of yeah, useful. Yeah. Discreet. Yeah, yeah, usable. So how this always goes, um, big guy, how soon can you have us and this new style aluminum grip? I'm, I'd say let's just do smooth to start with. And if we yeah. decide some some texture down the line, we can do that. Yeah, I mean, the texture is one of those things that's it's different for everybody. Like me, I like the most aggressive texture, but what my hands do and what somebody that types at a keyboard all day is it's different it's i think the grip tape version would be good because there's different grits you can kind of tailor it to yourself right so how how soon can you uh whip us out one of those you know throw throw some material on the five axis and I put my real thinking hat a uh, day two days three days all right. Well, and I know you've you've got some grips kind of drawn up that we haven't used before. So yeah. I'm thinking that you probably have something in there pretty close. Um, so I would say let's kind of wrap it up for this first episode, and we'll we'll let the uh, the mad scientist over here whip us out an aluminum grip, and and we'll see what we think about it. Yeah. We'll come back and see yeah. what we can and what what we can show. We may like it. We may hate it. You never know. All right, sounds good. If you have any ideas or suggestions, you know, we we manufacture everything in-house, so we can always make changes. We can always update things. If you got any ideas on the grip, texture, stuff for it, um, in the comments down below, um, send us some messages, and we're definitely listening and open to suggestions. See you next time. Take care. Bye. Toodles.